Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, we're going to check out MX Linux 19.4, which was actually released last month. I'm a little late getting around to reviewing this one, but better late than never, right? You guys seem to really enjoy this distribution, and I don't blame you. It's one of my favorites as well. It's actually number one on DistroWatch right now. And while that's not an accurate representation of the value of a distribution, after all, the rankings on DistroWatch don't mean anything other than how many times a particular page or subsection was clicked, but I kind of agree this time though because I hear nothing but great things from the community, I love it, and even people within my YouTube audience seem to love it as well. There seems to be universal acclaim for MX Linux, and it's finally time to dive back in on this channel. It's been a while since I checked out MX Linux, and it's time to make that right today. So. Let's go ahead and dive into MX Linux 19.4. First of all, I'll give you guys my thoughts on the installation process. For the most part, it's your standard live installer where you can try out the distribution and then install it if you want to. I prefer this approach as it gives you the opportunity to test out your hardware before you wipe out your current operating system. When you look deeper at the installer though, You'll realize that while it does have a very typical workflow where you go from one section to the next while answering questions, the MX Linux installer has more options than that of most other distributions. For example, it even gives you the option to save your live session changes. So that way, if you've customized something in the live environment, you can make those changes carry over into the final installation. That's brilliant. In fact, this may be my favorite installer that I've used yet, and that's because it has every single option that I would like an installer to have. The only downside for me is that I don't understand why it doesn't mask out the media that you've booted from when you select a target disk. On my laptop, I have a one terabyte internal SSD, and I started the MX Linux installer from a flash drive. It gave me the option to install onto the flash drive, basically meaning that the installer allows me to overwrite the very thing that I'm using to install from. Most installation utilities are smart enough to hide the device that the root file system is on for the live session, but not MX Linux. If you are not careful, you can make the wrong choice, and that results in you having to recreate your installation media because the installer allows you to wipe it out. And this prompt comes up not once, but twice. First, when you select the target disk, and then again when you choose the storage device for the bootloader. And worse, it defaults to the flash drive both times, so you have to be mindful of your selections here. Now, it goes without saying that if you are installing a distribution of Linux, you should always pay very special attention to the settings and what you are choosing during the process. But I had difficulty doing even that because the font sizes were extremely small because high DPI support in MX Linux is almost non-existent. Everything by default on a high DPI display is almost unreadable, so half the time, I wasn't even completely sure what I was selecting during the installer. And then later on, I actually downgraded the resolution to 1080p so that when I recorded the footage for this video during the installer, you guys would actually be able to see what's going on on the screen. And even with that, I still feel that it's my favorite installer of all the Linux distributions that I've tried recently. Again, it has every option that I would ever want an installer to have. Now, let's take a look around MX Linux 19.4. What you are seeing right now is the XFCE edition of MX Linux, which is essentially their flagship. They have other versions as well, and specifically this is the AHS release, or Advanced Hardware Support release, and I'll let you know what that means later in the video. But anyway, we have XFCE 4.14 powering the desktop experience, and a great deal of default applications to make MX Linux have most of what you'd probably need out of the box. And the default layout of their implementation of XFCE is very unique. If you were to install XFCE manually on another distribution, it wouldn't look anything like this. For example, we have the main panel here on the left-hand side of the screen. 
and the application launcher is actually on the bottom of the panel. Initially, when I first checked out MX Linux, I expected it to be on the top, but that's actually what you click on when you want to log out. The application menu is this icon right here, and I'll show off some applications in a moment. But first, we should talk about this welcome screen because, well, it is right here in front of us. And when it comes to this welcome screen, you might not be amazed all that much at first. After all, a welcome screen on a distribution of Linux is fairly common. But be careful not to dismiss this one outright because there's some very useful things here. For example, if you click on Tools, you'll see immediately what makes MX Linux stand out. The distribution provides you with an easy way to customize just about anything you could ever imagine. Do you want to take a snapshot of your entire installation? There's a tool for that. It's this one right here. So as you can see, we have a tool that you can use to take an entire snapshot. That's pretty awesome. If you ever need to repair the bootloader, we have an option for that right here. If you want to add a new user to your system, that's right here. If you have an NVIDIA GPU on your computer, then we have a dedicated link right here that we can use to set up the proprietary driver if we need it. We have a tool right here for cleaning up junk files. That's pretty useful. And I could go on. Everything you could probably think of is represented here in MX Tools. And this isn't even everything, but it's definitely a great thing to have. And you'll find things like this all over the desktop. I just feel like they've thought of everything. I really enjoy all the helpful defaults, tools, utilities, and all kinds of things that the MX Linux developers provide us with to make the experience all that much better. And there's also a utility we can use to tweak the panel as well. And the first time you launch this, it's going to ask you whether or not you would like to back up your current settings, which is also clever. I've already done that. But as you can see here, this actually allows you to change the appearance of the panel. For example, I can uncheck this box right here and check the box to display the panel horizontally. And as you can see, we have the panel now at the bottom. That's pretty cool. Now I'll change it back because I want to keep everything as close to the defaults as I can in order to show you guys what MX Linux will most likely look like if you were to install it. And I can't go over every single tweak and utility the MX Linux developers provide us with because that would be a very, very long video. But when it all comes down to it, I honestly feel like the developers of MX Linux, they give you more customization option than any other distro I've ever tried. When it comes to pre-installed apps, we have Firefox as the default browser. And you're probably thinking, big deal, most distributions actually feature Firefox as the default browser. But what you might not know is that this is a custom version of Firefox provided by the developers of MX Linux. This isn't something that they've simply included from the repositories. They've actually provided this to us themselves. So if I go to help and then check the version, we can see that MX Linux is listed right here as the provider of Firefox. And you might be thinking, why would they go through that trouble? Why not just give you the Debian package? Well, the thing is, MX Linux is based on Debian Stable, and Debian Stable does not actually provide you with the normal Firefox package. The version that Debian ships is the extended service release version, which is usually several versions out of date. And the reason why Debian does that is because they're catering more to the enterprise market. And in the enterprise, generally speaking, most people don't want the latest and greatest. They just want something predictable and stable. So that's why Debian provides ESR, but for most desktop and laptop users, we generally want the latest and greatest when it comes to the browser, and MX Linux took it upon themselves to package this for us, which was great. However, not all apps are at their latest version though. So I'll close this, and let's take a look at LibreOffice. The version of LibreOffice that we have in this release is all the way back to version 6.1. And what's interesting about this is that the enterprise equivalent of LibreOffice is also at a newer version, 
So we are several versions behind here, and you might not think that that's a big deal, but it kind of is. I'm a big fan of LibreOffice. In fact, my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, 3rd Edition, available now, was written using only LibreOffice. Now, my publisher actually uses Microsoft Office, so during the process, I had to send documents that were created using LibreOffice over to them for them to open in Microsoft Office, add some you know, comments, then they would send the documents back to me. So it was a collaborative effort where documents were being sent back and forth. And I didn't run into a single issue. It was totally fine. But if you look at the you know, average Linux forum, there's going to be people there that are complaining about compatibility between LibreOffice and Microsoft Office. And I have to wonder, how many of those complaints are due to that person's distribution shipping a very old version of LibreOffice? In every version of LibreOffice, the developers make actual improvements to compatibility between LibreOffice and Microsoft Office. So I feel like distributions that ship an old version of LibreOffice are actually doing harm to the project in general, to LibreOffice, because, well, the reputation of LibreOffice might actually go down if people are, you know, having problems with compatibility, problems that would otherwise be fixed if they were on a newer version. So with MX Linux shipping version 6.1, or any distribution that's shipping an older version of LibreOffice, that's not a good thing. But it's not really the fault of the MX Linux developers, in my opinion, because this is more of a Debian problem. And since MX Linux is based on Debian, then, well, the versions that Debian ship are often going to be the same version that MX Linux provides you with as well. And yes, they give you a custom version of Firefox, but you can't expect the MX Linux developers to give you a custom version of everything. They only have so much time. Now, thankfully, you can easily just install the Flatpak version of LibreOffice or even the app image, and you could totally sidestep the version that Debian provides you with, which is what I recommend in a situation where you are stuck with the old version of LibreOffice in the repositories of your distro. The problem, though, not everyone knows that that's a possibility. Often people just stay with whatever they're provided, for better or worse. But all things considered, LibreOffice is a great choice for a pre-installed app. And like I mentioned, I love it. It's what I use for all of my Office tasks, and I couldn't be happier. So let's talk about performance. Although I wouldn't accuse MX Linux of being a lightweight distribution, it is fast, and it does perform exceptionally well. It's just, well, responsive. Everything just comes up quickly for me. So I'll bring up the task manager here to give you a general idea. And as you can see, it's really not using all that much in terms of resources. And when I open up applications, it's just, well, fast. So I don't have any complaints at all when it comes to the performance. I think it's great. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I downloaded the AHS release of MX Linux, and that stands for Advanced Hardware Support. It's an alternate version of MX Linux that includes an updated kernel updated drivers, and also newer firmware updates as well. So to show you guys what I'm talking about, we'll open up a terminal. Old fashioned, I know, but it works. In the AHS release, we have kernel 5.10. And the kernel you would normally get with MX Linux is actually all the way back on version four, if I understand correctly. And that's very out of date. We could thank Debian for that, but it doesn't really matter to us in MX Linux because they provide us with an alternate version that includes a newer kernel. And honestly, I recommend that you go with the AHS release of MX Linux for most use cases, and I can't really think of any situation that would make me want to recommend anything else other than the AHS release, because why not benefit from the latest kernel and drivers? Let me know in the comments down below if you could think of an edge case that would make you want to use the non-AHS release for your installation. And also, like I mentioned earlier, this distribution is based on Debian Stable, which is currently at version 10. Debian 11 is just around the corner. I can't wait to check it out and do a review on that. Stay tuned. But anyway, as of the time I'm recording this video, MX Linux is using the latest stable version of Debian. Now, before I close out this review, 
I do want to acknowledge the fact that I didn't really talk about the new features of MX Linux 19.4. And the reason for that is because I couldn't find any standout new features to talk about. There's a ton of smaller improvements pretty much everywhere, so the developers of MX Linux, they weren't just, you know, doing nothing. They've made a lot of improvements, but they're all small improvements that make the overall experience better, but don't really provide me as a reviewer with any one thing to really highlight here. But when it all comes down to it, MX Linux is a fantastic distribution. There's attention to detail at every turn, and I highly recommend that literally everyone tries this out. Yeah, I did have some issues with high DPI support, and I really hope they get that fixed. But putting that aside, MX Linux is fantastic. And if you haven't checked it out yet, I highly recommend that you do check it out. It's a great fit for pretty much all Linux users, especially those of you out there that just love to tweak everything. If that's you, you're especially going to love MX Linux. So check it out and let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.